Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a video about NVIDIA's brand new line of 30 series GPUs. Today they were announced September 1st, 2020, and they are significant because it's not just another refresh, folks. This generation of GPUs delivers the most performance from one generation to the next that we've ever seen. So today we got the 3070, 3080, and the 3090. The 3090 tops out at 1499, 24 gigs of RAM on board, GDDR6X, you're seeing that correctly. This is not a joke. Over 10,000 CUDA cores on this GPU. It is gigantic. It also requires a 12-pin power connector. So if you're ready to jump out and buy uh, the 3090, be aware you may need a new power supply. I believe the, the full draw is 350 watts. So where we've traditionally seen NVIDIA move towards more efficient GPUs that require less power for performance, they've decided to throw that out the window and just say more is more, which quite frankly is the truth. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're not still trying to be power efficient. It's just a matter of in order to get the performance that the 3090 delivers, it needs more power. And as a result, it's also a lot larger in order to deliver better cooling overall. But to give you perspective, I mean, my 2080 Ti, you could say, is pretty much ready to go in the garbage as of today's announcement, just because the 3070 NVIDIA is claiming will outperform it, believe it or not, at 499 US dollars. Although I do think the 2080 Ti will still have an edge because it does have 11 versus the eight gigs of RAM that the 3070 has. But then the, the sweet spot, the 3080, that is a very interesting offering because 10 gigs of RAM, so it's nearly, in my opinion, it's very close to what the 2080 Ti represents, but in terms of performance, a big leap. I mean, over 8,000, it's over 8,700 CUDA cores on this GPU. And all of these cards are about their bandwidth, quite frankly. I mean, when you think about that uh, the 3090 is capable of 36 shader teraflops, as opposed to the 2080 Ti's 13.4, even if you don't know what that is, just think of those numbers again. We're going from 13.4 to 36. That's a very big jump. And the 3090, 50% faster than the Titan RTX. Now, I don't know what will become of the Titan line. I don't think we're seeing a TI GPU. Uh, it looks like the 3090 has taken that over. And at 1499, again, it is the most expensive GPU that isn't a Titan that NVIDIA has ever offered. Uh, so if you're ready to upgrade your power supply and you're ready to game in 4K at 144 hertz or greater, because I think that's really the reality of this GPU. The 3090 has been slated as being 8K capable, but I think the reality of this card is that if you're like me and you want a game on a large format display like my LG 48-inch uh, uh, CX at, again, 4K 120 hertz with RTX on and all of the, you know, the ultra settings you can get, this is going to make it happen. Now, all three cards support HDMI 2.1. I've been waiting for that. If you followed my Club 3D uh, display port to HDMI adapter, you know that I was really hoping to avoid having to make the jump to Ampere from Turing. But, you know, it, it kind of seems like a no-brainer because we're not looking, again, at a traditional uh, jump in performance. We're looking at basically a new world, and that's part of the reason that, you know, we're moving to 12 pins uh, on, you know, two out of the four GPUs here. So again, you may need a new power supply. You can see right here, uh, the graphics card power 350 on the 3090, 320 on the 3080 and 220 on the 3070. And in terms of power supplies, 650 is the base recommendation for the th uh, 3070 and then 750 on both 3080 and the 3090. But quite frankly, I wouldn't go below 850 if I were you. Uh, headroom is nice to have, and I'm glad my power supply is uh, 850 watts. I mean, I flirted originally with going with 1,000 on the custom build that I put together uh, a few years ago, and I'm glad that I, I mean, had I kept the 1,000 watt that I was originally going with, which was overkill, it would have been fine, of course, but let's get into what else they've come up with here. So uh, this is really making RTX a thing rather than what many thought was a marketing uh, tool because 
now you're going to be able to truly run RTX in all of your games. At least that's the promise of the 3090. I'm not so sure about the 3080. Uh, and not have any sort of performance issues. You know, with the RTX uh, 2080 Ti that I have to my right, uh, I could turn on RTX and I was going to get 30 frames per second. It, it just, it was really not ideal to say the least. And that's why it was dubbed a gimmick. Here, it's a whole new world. And if you watched any of the, the demos they did today, they were stunning. I mean, kudos to NVIDIA. I've been following them uh, since 98, 99. They were a $200 million company. Now they're the largest chip maker in the world, at least in terms of market cap value, at over $380 billion. I mean, they passed Intel a while ago. So, uh, you know, what else would you expect from not only the best GPU builder in the world, designer, uh, but also in addition to that, when it comes to deep learning to AI, nobody does it better than NVIDIA. So, NVIDIA also touched on streaming, which I thought was very cool, uh, taking shadow play to the next level. And I could, you know, dive into that, but basically their new NVIDIA broadcast app does what it always aimed to do, which is make OBS like, you know, a thing of the past essentially is the goal and give you green screen capability without a green screen. That's why they're showing the whole, you know, streamer setup here is because with a card like the 3090 and, you know, they're arguing all three cards, you will be able to do this with a single PC setup. So that'll be very interesting to see. Uh, they showed that the you know now uh, part of the the streaming software they have the broadcast app is that it will track you if you move around. I don't know who really gets. A, I guess there are streamers that get up and move around and they'd like the camera to crop and follow them. I don't really think there are many out there that want that, but it'll do that. And then of course dynamic green screening capability essentially without a green screen, as I mentioned. So that's very cool stuff. Um, also. Uh, addressing microphone clipping, things like that, and background uh, noise reduction. Those are all things that we welcome. Uh, you don't expect it, but you welcome it. And then the latency, uh, that was another thing they got into uh, with managing, you know, not just, obviously, G-Sync monitors have the benefit uh, of variable refresh rate on board, but addressing uh, variable refresh rate on essentially any TV any monitor with HDMI 2.1 is a big part of this new generation of GPUs. And uh, the DL DLSS was also a great demo because they essentially, as I can show you right here, were just showing in-depth stranding how they were able to achieve better clarity. Let's go ahead and make that full screen if I can. Maybe I can't. Um, but again, you see right there, 30 frames per second on the left, Oh, sorry, we got that on the screen there. 68 frames per second on the right, and the clarity is better on the right with the DLSS turned on, and that's because it's you have to realize it's sampling and using AI in order to achieve better overall detail without necessarily having higher resolution. So this is something NVIDIA has been working on for a long time and, you know, leveraging their tensor cores. Uh, and that's exactly what they did here. So very impressive. I thought that was incredibly cool that, but it's something I knew was coming. You know, subsampling has been on their to-do list. It's been something they've been, uh, they've had in the oven, so to speak, for quite some time. And now that makes sense that the pitch is RTX. It's on. It's because it is. You know, if the previous generation, if Turing was all about the promise of RTX, but not the realization, well, now we have Ampere for the realization rather than the promise. And I probably should have said that at the top of the video, but I don't script things and this is just how my brain works. So welcome to my world. And that is what we're seeing here. I mean, the new architecture offered in the 30 series, as they say, right at the top, you know, it twice the, the throughput, uh, third generation tensor cores with twice the throughput and uh, the new SM throughput as well. You're getting it in ev from every direction, literally. So I think most people who are waiting for this announcement have already said, take my money. I'm in that group, fortunately or, or unfortunately, because during a pandemic, not the best time to keep spending money on tech. But NVIDIA knows with most people doing the right thing, I hope, and staying at home as much as they possibly can, this is the type of stuff that people are falling back on for entertainment. Uh, gaming, uh, movies, although movies and television series we're going to run out of uh, if things 
don't get back to a semblance of normalcy, uh, gaming is going to continue to go on. And uh, they're, you know, gaming is thriving right now. And what better time to drop a generational bomb on performance? And that's exactly what at least the 3090 with 24 gigs of RAM and I think it takes up three, it may take up four slots. Either way, I'm ready for it. Um, I, it will come with an adapter, to my knowledge, uh, for uh, the power pin connector for that 12-pin support. I mean, going back to the Titan X, or excuse me, Titan Z, uh, I remember thinking, wow, I mean, how much power could a GPU need? Now, that was really two GPUs in one. Uh, since then, all of the Titans post the Z uh, were singular. They did not have two GPUs on board. And they were relatively tame on the power side, you know. Uh, but 8-pin has been the standard now for a long, long time until, of course, the RTX 3090. So I'm curious, are you upgrading? Do you plan to? I know they're expensive, not all of them. I think the 3070 is a pretty solid value. I think the 3080 is a good value as well. Um, you know, it's you're not breaking the bank, but of course that 3090 is setting a new all-time high price point. I'm wondering how many of you are after the 3090. Uh, obviously, the 3070 and 3080 are more than competent uh, to handle just about any type of gaming, but that's often determined by what monitor you have. Again, in my case, I want to drive a 4K 120 hertz OLED, so the 3090 seems to be the ideal choice if I want to have RTX on and max out everything. But I'm curious what everyone else is interested in. Uh, I'm guessing the 3070 and 3080 are going to be more popular with the general market because of pricing, and again, because most people don't have uh, 4K displays that they're trying to run at high refresh rates. It's just not, you know, 1440p is still very much a standard, and that's why we have 360 hertz monitors hitting the market now, which was another thing they talked about, uh, NVIDIA, and that's because it is really impressive to see a 360 hertz refresh rate, but, you know, if you're like me and you want to game in 4K, the 3090 seems to be the way to now officially do it because God knows for years I've been hearing people say, why even bother getting a 4K 144 hertz monitor IPS display because no GPU can support it. And that was a half truth. We were able to support it. It's just keeping that frame rate, you know, if you were playing at ultra at 60 frames per second was beyond a challenge. Now with the 30 series, it seems like that challenge has been not only accepted, but overcome. But we'll see. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Again, I'm interested in what everybody has to say. Uh, as usual, please hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.